Hi guys, James at Goddard Radio Moscow Beer and Metal Reviews again for you today with another beer review. Um, I'm actually filming this review from St George in Queensland which is about 500-600 kilometres to the west of Brisbane and this is my first review that I'm filming for you from my aunt and uncle's house and it's actually their 20th wedding anniversary tonight so I'll dedicate this video to them and for this review we're actually going to do my first Queensland beer review and this is probably my uncle's kind of favourite beer that he drinks, his kind of go-to beer so I've been enjoying quite a few of these with them. So this is the Castlemaine Perkins Brewery which is from Brisbane and this is the 4x Bitter Beer which I believe is their oldest beer that they're actually still producing. So anyway we'll go through a very short kind of quick fire history of the brewery. If you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward a few minutes and you will get right there. The brewery website as always is in the description for you below along with a link to my other reviews that I'll do from Castlemaine Perkins in the future. So anyway as you might guess from the name Castlemaine Castle Main Perkins. Uh, Castle Main Brewery and Perkins Brewery were originally two different breweries. So the Castle Main Brewery was founded in 1877 by Nicholas and Edward Fitzgerald, the two brothers, and it was named after another brewery that they owned in Castle Main down in Victoria, of course, on the very southeastern part of the Australian continent. The Perkins Brewery was the second one, and this had been established in Toowoomba, which is about 200 k's inland to the west of Brisbane. And this brewery was founded in 1866 by by Patrick Perkins and he actually expanded operations to Brisbane by buying the City Brewery in 1872. Now the 4X brand was introduced by Castle Main in 1924 when the company hired German brewer Alois Wilhelm Le Leitner sorry, and the Castle Main Brewery bought Perkins Brewery in 1928 and this was actually quite a few years after the death of Patrick Perkins in 1901 and then the brewery group was actually named Castle Main Perkins Limited. Now in 1992 the brewery became part of the Lion Nathan Group and the brewery itself is actually located in Milton in Brisbane right next to the train station and this is why the labels have various different types of trains uh, on them over the years. They've had this, you can't really see it on this one but on the cans and on some of the stubby holders and things you can get usually there's different types of trains on the label but yeah it's quite, I'll just bring up the camera and let you have a little look at the artwork on this one. It's quite simple but as you can see it's actually quite nicely done, I think. Just bring the camera up. So yeah, you can see it there. This is the red one. The most common 4X beer that you'll find around is the gold, and they call them the goldies out here. And usually they'll just refer to this one in Australia as 4X red. They quite they have that kind of way of speaking out here. It's kind of colloquial, and they just uh, you know they just shorten everything. But yeah, quite nicely presented this one. I would say there's a little guy on the top of the bottle cap there. I'm not sure exactly who that's meant to be on the top of the bottle cap, but as you can see. Um, this beer is uh, labelled as being the pride of Queensland and it is one that quite a lot of Queenslanders drink um, but you will see 4X pretty much everywhere you go in, uh, in Queensland because they sponsor a lot of events and they sponsor I think it's the Brisbane Broncos or something which I believe are the Australian Football League I'm not sure about the different teams but 4X sponsor a lot of the different Australian soccer teams and, and everything like that so anyway, let's go on to the tasting of this beer then. This one is a 4.8% beer and they describe it as being a hot lager. And um, we'll just get this guy open. Hands are a little bit slippy from holding it there. But these guys are all screw tops. That's quite common in Australia. So let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting then. So actually, as I said, this is a beer that's kind of uh, grown on me since I've been drinking it with my uncle. It's quite, it is a macro produced beer, but it's one that I've actually kind of grown to quite like. Although that said, there are a few macro beers that I do actually quite enjoy. So as you can see, it's poured a nice kind of clear, goldeny straw, amber colour there. Just bring out the camera and make sure the light is letting you see that properly. As you can see, pours a nice kind of clear straw, kind of golden straw, amberish colour. It's got a finger and a half of a kind of frothy white head there. There are some bumpy bits to it. There's a lot of carbonation in this one too, but you can see if I put my fingers behind the, the glass there, it is kind of completely transparent. So without further ado, let's have a little look at the aroma with this guy. So it does have a wee teeny bit of kind of soapy character to it, but it's mainly a kind of nice light bready malt there. It's actually got quite a bit of aroma in it for a macro beer, I would say, but it's mainly a kind of pale bready malt with just a little bit of biscuit as well. But yeah, that typical kind of pale malt that you expect of a kind of macro lager. It does have a little bit of a soapy smell to it, this one actually. 
But just so you know actually, this is one thing I've not explained yet, this glass is actually a bit smaller than a pint glass, this is a schooner glass which I think is somewhere along the lines of two thirds of a pint or five sixth, it's, it's one of the two, I'm not quite sure, but it's a little bit smaller than a pint and that's one of the standard measurements in Australia for beer. But yeah, there's, there's the other thing with this aroma is there's a little kind of grassiness from the hops as well, maybe just a wee touch of lemon citrus, but mainly a kind of grassiness, but I would say this beer is more of a malty one, you've got that kind of light, paley, bready malt. But anyway, without further ado, let's give it a taste. So, to my aunt and uncle's 20th wedding anniversary, cheers to my aunt Julia and uncle Sandy. Yeah. It's actually, I actually think this one tastes better out of the bottle than it does out of the can. We usually drink it in cans, my uncle and I. But out of the, but the bottle version definitely, I think it's a bit more malty. You've got the nice kind of light bready malts in there. There is a, I think there's a little bit of kind of caramel corny character that mixes together. It definitely has a bit of, of cereal in it, I would say. And that kind of sits just in the middle of the palate there. Yeah, there's definitely a little bit of kind of biscuity, that sort of biscuity caramel sweetness in the middle of there, and that just blankets the middle of the tongue. You get a nice sweet streak just right in the kind of middle edges of the tongue there. Really, really nice, actually. But yeah, nice kind of light bready malts, I would say. A little bit of biscuit. On the hoppy side of things, it's actually quite an earthy hop, a kind of vegetal, vegetal hop that comes out on this one, but... There is a little bit of a kind of a grassy character that just goes around the edge of the tongue, but this is mainly a malty beer, this one, I would say. They say it's a hot lager, but I actually always pick up this beer as being a little bit more um, malty than anything, if, if you like. Yeah, there's a little bit of a kind of... Um, I would say that the kind of earthy character and the vegetal character from the hops definitely grows a little bit throughout the beer and you just get that kind of on the back edges of the tongue but it gradually spreads towards the front but there is a little bit of kind of grassy freshness around the front but around the, the very kind of tip of the tongue if you like but mainly a kind of um, earthy character, vegetal character coming out of the beer on this one but the malt character, I actually do quite like the malt character of this one, just that nice kind of corny biscuity sweetness and for a, I would say for one of the macro laggers it actually does, it's actually one of the nicer macro laggers you're going to find in Australia in my opinion, maybe even a bit further afield than that, it's one of the nicer macro laggers but maybe it's just because I've been kind of drinking quite a few of these, who knows. But yeah, it's quite a nice and quite an easy sessionable beer. In terms of the mouthfeel, it's definitely light bodied, the carbonation is quite moderate I would say, it is quite a light one and you either get two things, you either get a very light and smooth beer in Australia or you get quite a highly carbonated one, it's just because of how high the temperatures are here, I mean in St George we've been having 42 degrees so you want something that's nice and light and this is definitely that. But yeah you get a nice little tingle of the carbonation just at the front of the tongue when you take it in. But it has a nice crispness to it and a nice freshness, but it does have a little bit of a musky feel from the hops and that's just the earthy and vegetal character coming out and that kind of comes out a little bit more in the aftertaste. That sort of takes over that slight sweetness from the kind of biscuity, kind of slightly caramel malts. But overall I would say it's honestly one of the better macro laggers that you'll find in Australia, maybe even a bit further afield than that. And I actually do quite enjoy drinking these with my uncle as well, so maybe it's a little bit nostalgic for me but um, it's definitely a nice kind of uh, a nice macro lager this one so if you do find yourself in Australia drinking macro lagers I would recommend that if you're in Queensland you go for this one over the gold the gold one doesn't have all that much flavour to it this one's a bit more flavourful and it is actually a bit stronger as well I think the gold is like 3.5% this is 4.8 which is more like it but anyway um, I hope you've enjoyed my first Queensland beer review I do have a couple of other reviews that I will be filming at my aunt and uncle's place over the next little while so tune in for those but um, please comment in the section below and let me know your own thoughts on this beer Queenslanders please let me know a few of the different craft breweries that you would recommend I take a look at but I thank you again for watching my beer reviews I hope you're enjoying the series and um, I will be filming more soon cheers